Hello, welcome to Introduction to Literature, English 160, at the Pennsylvania Institute of Technology. Today we're going to be looking at literary symbols. So what is a symbol and why do we use it? A symbol is a thing that represents or stands for something else, especially a material object re representing something abstract. A symbol will show the reader what you mean instead of having to spell out meaning to the reader. Um, and more importantly, and this is really why symbols are used in literature, a symbol conveys a very complex idea in a very simple image. So when we think of the American flag, for example, it symbolizes patriotism, it symbolizes liberty, independence, freedom. It also, you know, represents our collective identity, a sense of what it is to be an American, you know, the diversity as well as the unity in our culture. So, you know, the flag in and of itself is just a piece of fabric, but what it represents, what it symbolizes is so much more. And that's why writers especially like to use symbols um, because there is a depth of meaning that you can't get with mere sentences. Additionally, when we are looking at specifically poetry, you know, poetry is compressed. You know, instead of a 20 page story or a 200 page novel, you might only have 20 lines to work with, and you have to get the story of whatever your, um, the poet is expressing into those 20 lines. So these images, these symbols become very important. Context is also important to understand. Context is the circumstances of the situation or the story. The symbolic meaning of an object or an action is understood by when, where, and how it is used. It also depends on who reads them. So, for example, most of the symbols that I'm going to be discussing in this PowerPoint come from a Western uh, perspective, you know, the United States, Europe, whereas if you go to an Eastern culture like Japan, um, a lot of these symbols would have very different meanings. Um, additionally, you know, when we look at time period, and that's an extremely important aspect in um, interpreting symbols, a symbol from 200 years ago may not be as relevant as it is today. Whereas a symbol from um, the last 25 years, like 9-11, the, the World Trade Center, um, is going to be much more um, aware, people will have a much higher awareness of these symbols um, than, for example, someone standing on a snake. So the example in the PowerPoint um, a chain can symbolize an unbroken commitment, such as love, or it can symbolize imprisonment or slavery. So really, as you are identifying the symbols that we find in the literature we read this semester, you have to always remember that it cannot be interpreted in a vacuum. It has to be interpreted within the context of the work it is written. So we're going to go through some very specific color symbols now. Black, which is probably the easiest to ascertain, symbolizes evil, death, no redeeming qualities. Um, you know, we have our uh, villainous black cat there on the right side. He looks so cute. Um, but we also can see things like um, vampires. The villain in movies always wears a black hat. Um, Blackbirds like ravens. Um, and vultures signify, you know, that death and evil. Then on the other end of the color spectrum would be white, which symbolizes goodness, purity, and life. So we see a uh, young lady in a wedding dress that's white, and again, that is to represent her transition from pure to married. Um, we also see this uh, white imagery or symbol demonstrated in things like angels, doves, swans, um, and also good guys tend to wear the white hat. 
Red is a symbol that um, we are surrounded by every Valentine's Day, and it symbolizes passion, deep emotion, love, sexuality, and it can also represent danger. So red has, um, you know, kind of a dual meaning, but in a lot of ways, especially for those of us who've had bad love affairs, we can tell you that red, um, love, and danger often go hand in hand. Then we have green, which has multiple interpretations depending on the context. Um, the movie or the book, more importantly, The Great Gatsby, really highlights this where the green light at the end of Daisy's dock becomes a huge symbol in the story and is probably the most famous symbol of American literature in many ways. So green <clears throat> symbolizes new life. It can symbolize an experience. He's green behind the ears. Um, it can represent a new beginning. You know, springtime comes and um, the trees, all the leaves come back, the grass grows, everything is fresh with green and, you know, that new beginning idea. And it can also represent money or jealousy and envy. And, um, you know, that phrase green with envy happens on a regular basis whenever we see something we wish we had. Additional color symbols include yellow which symbolizes decay and approaching death. So think of the leaves turning yellow in the fall and how that um, is a foreshadowing in a sense of uh, the coming winter and when everything dies and goes underground. Then we have gold, which symbolizes wealth, success, prosperity, achieving one's dreams. And again, when we see gold, it can oftentimes be used ironically. Um, you know, somebody who has a golden dream, you know, and at the end of the story, like in Gatsby, you know, it falls apart. You know, um, Gatsby runs over well, Gatsby's car, his gold car, runs over Myrtle. Of course, Gatsby's not driving, but I don't want uh, to drop any spoilers on you if you haven't read the book. Color symbols, probably the two most well-known. Blue, masculine, boyishness. Pink is girliness, femininity. But blue can also represent that peaceful, calm, cool, almost innocent perspective. And if you think of the beach... You know, we see that calmness enter when we sit on the beach and we stare at the water. Um, in addition to femininity, pink also represents tenderness, maternal love, and of course acceptance. Purple is the color of royalty. It's also the color of power, arrogance, and wisdom. Um, this lady on the right here is Queen Elizabeth II, and you often see her in purple. Um, and you'll often see crowns depicted as purple because this is a pretty well-known symbol. Brown symbolizes earthiness, simplicity, dependability, humility, poverty, you know, kind of that, you know, poor but honest perspective. Then we move into seasonal symbols. You know, spring is, as I mentioned, rebirth, new life, natural energy. Summer is our time of playing and fun and passion and love. Um, you know, all of those um, activities that we really enjoy, um, especially when we're teenagers. Then the autumn and fall represents our maturity. We have to grow up. We have to change. We have to focus on our responsibilities. And then, you know, sadly, winter is a symbol for old age and death. And, uh, you know, when we go through these cycles, um, you oftentimes understand them better as you get older because you know the difference between being in the summer and being um, part of the autumnal generation. Sunrise symbolizes the beginning of something, often a journey filled with possibility. It's the beginning of the day. Sunset, the end of the day, symbolizes the end, winding down, ability to see things in retrospect. And these clues, these, these words that are used in literature, are not meant to confuse or, or hide things, but rather they're really meant as, as I mentioned, a shortcut for a very 
complex concept, but it's also used in such a way that in every other field, such as doctors, lawyers, accountants, they have special language they use to refer to aspects of their job. Um, same thing with um, people who work in the IT industry, engineering, medicine, all of those fields have their own terminology. And in a sense, that's what writers use. We use this terminology to help people understand these large concepts in very compressed ways. So now we're also going to look at some of the numerical symbols that we'll see. One is the loneliest number. It symbolizes solitude. Two symbolizes romantic love. It's that idea of coupling. Number three represents um, the Christian imagery for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Other interpretations see it as almost a perfect number in terms of literature because you have the beginning, the middle, and the end. Um, so you'll notice that there are a lot of stories that involve the number three, the three little pigs, um, the three musketeers. And as these numbers become more um, apparent while you read, you're going to see more of these symbols jumping out at you. Number four symbolizes the order in the universe, the four elements of earth, air, fire, and water, the four seasons, the four points on a compass. So as you look at, again, these numbers, you realize that in some of the literature that you've already read, these numbers have played a significant role in them. Number five symbolizes the hands, the five fingers, and hard work effort. They can also represent the devil, you know, because of the whole pentagram thing. Um, and again, you know, if you come from a different perspective, for example, in the Middle East, five is seen as a very lucky number. Um, so again, you know, context is king. Number seven, we all know, represents good fortune or good luck. Uh, number 12 symbolizes the heavens, the 12 months, the 12 signs of the zodiac, the 12 hours of the moon, and the 12 hours of the sun. And lastly, number 13 symbolizes bad luck or misfortune. So when we see these uh, numbers again, uh, we oftentimes just take the idea of 13, for example, being bad luck as being... Eh, just another thing that we've gotten used to seeing. Keeping in mind, however, that a lot of these have very interesting beginnings. Um, one of the earliest references to 13 as being bad luck comes from the Bible, where um, the Last Supper, it was Jesus and his 12 disciples. The 13th person at the dinner table, of course, was Judas, who ultimately betrays Jesus. So, um, there are other representations of the number 13 being misfortunate, but that's probably the most famous. Animal symbols are very popular. We have our dove, which symbolizes peace and love. The eagle symbolizes independence, strength, and freedom. Um, and uh, again, when we look at an eagle, it represents in large part who we are as Americans. So another very complex symbol that can be boiled down to a five-letter word. Swans symbolize beauty and elegance, so the ugly duckling turns into the beautiful swan. Some of us like ducks, but that's okay too. Animal symbols also include the dog, which again symbolize loyalty, protection, courage. Cats are uh, symbolic of mystery, sensuality, that idea, not necessarily that you want to have sex with your cat, but that it is very sensual in the sense that it appeals to your senses. Um, they're very clever, watchful, idle though, and often associated with lust, um, to the extent that in the Middle Ages, prostitutes were called cats. And then, of course, one of our most famous animal symbols is the snake, and this is from the Old Testament of the uh, Bible, and that is Adam and Eve, and the snake offering fruit from the tree of knowledge to Eve, who succumbs to the temptation. So, of course, the uh, snake represents 
not only temptation, but evil, and um, because of its shape, male sexuality. Other important symbols um, include skull and crossbones, which you know all of us who've seen the pirate movies know that um, death, danger, and destruction is on its way. Water is the beginning of life. It's cleansing, um, represents birth. Um, if you think about the concept of baptism and how it is meant to wash away the sins of a person's life, um, you can see the direct correlation between something that um, so many Americans have gone through and the actual interpretive or symbolic meaning. Flowers are often used to symbolize a woman's sexuality because of the way they blossom. Flowers, um, there is an entire book of meaning behind flowers. Um, there's an entire language of flowers, and um, you know, it's when you see a flower in a story, it's usually used very specifically. Some of the more popular ones, um, rosebuds, usually generate the idea of a virginal love. You know that. The idea of a person who has not blossomed yet, so to speak. Lilies have come to represent death um, because they were often used at funerals. Poppies um, are used as a remembrance for those who have died. So you'll often see veterans selling um, or trying to you know, collect donations and they give you a little poppy. Uh, what that comes from is in World War II, or sorry, World War I, or the Great War as it was known, a doctor wrote a poem about the death and destruction he was witnessing called On Flanders Field, and he describes a field of poppies, and the poppies represent the dead bleeding soldiers. So it has um, become part of our collective understanding of symbols. And then, of course, we have the clover, and that refers to the Christian Trinity. Um, St. Patrick of Ireland convinced the Irish to give up their pagan ways by showing them that the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost could exist in one sentient being. So, if you have any questions about these symbols, please feel free to email or text me, and otherwise have a terrific day. Thank you.